been over 40 years, but today the PBA is back in Omaha. And Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. back on television after a two-plus month absence. inside the brand new Thunder Alley just outside of Omaha, Nebraska. Standing room only crowd today for the 16th event on this season's Denny's PBA Tour. And matchup number one pits reigning rookie of the year Billy Oatman versus the Hall of Famer Pete Weber. The winner of that match will then face the lefty and soon to be named rookie of the year Rhino Page. The number two seed occupied by the greatest bowler in history, Walter Ray Williams Jr. And our number one seed, Mike Scroggins, a victory today would give him multiple titles in a season for the first time in his 17-year career. Sold out crowd in Omaha. High scores all week long, three lefties and two Hall of Famers. All the elements are in place for a memorable afternoon of bowling. From Omaha, Rob Stone, Randy Peterson here with you in match number one. It's Billy Oatman versus Pete Weber. And what an odd year it's been for Pete Weber. We didn't see him on television at all for the first half of the season. Then when he does get under the lights, he's affected by, of all things, nerves. Yeah, it's been kind of strange. And, you know, arguably Pete Weber, the most physically gifted bowler to ever throw a bowling ball. And it's been a struggle for him his last two times out on television. He said he was nervous, he was overthinking it. But he said, Rob, today, I'm just going to come out and just throw shots. I'm going to turn the computer off and just throw it. Today's number two seed, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Well, he's been a regular in our Saturday TV production meetings, at least in the first half season. But we haven't seen him since December 9th. What happened? Hey, I think our expectations are too high. You know, when it comes to Walter Ray Williams, we expect him to be there all the time. And it's just tough to get out. His last few events, he's finished ninth all three times. We hold him to a higher standard, and Walter Ray held the top spot in the Denny's PBA Player of the Year points race for the last 13 weeks, but Chris Barnes' title last Sunday gave Barnes the lead. Now they are tied. Should Williams Jr. advance to the final, he will have taken over the lead. So match number one hits the five seed, Billy Oatman versus the four seed, Pete Weber. An electric crowd here in Omaha. I have never seen so many signs in my life, and they are going to be uh, they're going to be shown ad nauseum today. I have a feeling. Omaha really came out to support the PBA this week and today. Billy Oatman, the reigning Rookie of the Year, will get us underway here in Omaha. This crowd has set a, a new standard for PBA crowds. The most signs this place is going to rock today. Billy misses the oh. head pin with his first toss. I want to start out like that. And he looked like he struggled in practice. The last four or five shots that I saw him throw all went high. That shot was left of his target, and he leaves the nasty washout to start this match. An open frame eight. And Pete Weber... When he has the choice, will always make his opponent start the match. So his opponent will end up finishing the match. He wants his opponent to have all the pressure on him. Right now, Pete Weber looking solid. He looks solid in practice, and he looks comfortable. Come on, 10! <laughs> Well, this is going to go half pocket. We call this the swish zone. And Pete Weber, that rotation, gets all 10 to go down. And it's not how, it's how many. So Oatman, the reigning rookie of the year, 27 years prior to that, it was Pete Weber in 1980 winning rookie of the year honors. Well, Rob. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, and he did right there because Pete gets the great break on the right lane and then gets an awful break on the left lane with the stone nine. Pete doesn't waste much time between shots. So he drops that one down, so Weber goes strike, spare. Oatman, who 
missed the pocket and was eyeballing a washout on his first shot. Finished with eight, steps up here in the second frame with his effort. Third career television appearance in the second of the season. He finished fourth in Spartanburg, South Carolina, just before the holidays. That one too much to the right that time. And, and that's what I saw him do in practice. And he looks confusing. Looks like uh, he's not really sure where to play on the lanes. The left-handers, the southpaws this week, played around the first arrow, and depending on how much they wanted to hook it, they would move in and just kind of throw it to that spot, or they would play it like Mike Scroggins and go straight down and in from that first arrow. And right now, Billy Oatman doesn't know which one to do. Two, four, seven. And back to back, mm. open frames. Certainly not the way you want to start, especially bowling a Hall of Famer. Uh, Billy Oatman is uh, sweating like he's got the flu right now. Yeah, he's it's sweating. actually Pete Weber who's the one who's sick. Weber's been fighting cold-like symptoms since Wednesday, but you and I noticed in warm-ups that uh, Billy's got a nice little lather going. Yeah, well, there's been the flu bug that's kind of run its course out here on tour, and I think the only two people that haven't gotten it are you and I. Way to jinx us. Ball change. And the same washout plus the six pin. If you think he was sweating before, that's really going to add to it. Nothing worse than bowling on television and having a bad ball reaction. We saw Mike Devaney go through this last week. Right now, Pete Weber's got to be salivating sitting over there in the chair watching this. One, three, four, six, seven. Billy he goes to his seat and disgustingly takes the towel to wipe off his brow, and now Weber steps up, and he can pretty much begin putting a Cobra clutch on this match. And yes, it's just the third frame. Missed. Well, hang on now. Mm-hmm. Well, we talked about how high scoring the lanes were this week, but... These two guys proving us wrong right now. Yeah, one, two, four, six, ten on a shot that's wide. And for as high as the scores were, like you said, Rob, this is not the kind of start that we envisioned. Third washout of this match between these two. Take a look at our atonic edge. We focus on the footwork of Pete Weber. Yeah, it's kind of good feet, bad feet. This was a tournament of champions. Weber trips over his own two feet and fouls. This is the way Pete is known for throwing the bowling ball. Check this out. Perfect form, great balance at the foul line, and first frame strike. That's the only strike we've seen from either competitor. That's looking better. Yeah! Nicely done. Lumber liquidators averaged by round, and they are rolling on the Scorpion oil pattern this week. There you go, Billy. Bounce back, Billy. Let's see what happens on the left lane. He's still looking for his first mark of any kind. But this is picture perfect. Great knee bend, especially for a 41-year-old. I think that's the biggest key in our sport, is a real stable lower body. Got to have good solid legs to build a great foundation to deliver the bowling ball. Back to back jacks! All of a sudden it's a seven pin match. Billy Oven right back in this. Now Billy really looks like he's struggling. His wife, or his fiance and mother in town, Mom Joyce, his fiance Annette. Pete responds by leaving the seven. This is seventh top ten 
result of the season, but he is winless on television this season. And a good pitch there, just a bad pin carry again with Pete leaves the blower seven. Takes care of the seven. And Take a look at the big picture matchup between these two guys. And yesterday we were talking to Pete Weber, Randy, and I asked him to describe the lanes this week, and he said, very easy. Now, that sounds good to the ear, but is that really a good thing for a competition like this? Well, I, I mean, I, I like to see a variety of scores. And, you know, I think when the scores get outrageously high, I don't think it's good for anyone. Of course, the fans like to see that on Sundays. And, and you know, I'm all for big scores on television, but only if you earn it. Hello, Pocket. I think it's much better for the Lanes to be more of a medium scoring pace. I think the cream always rises to the top when you see that. Oatman struggled mightily to start this one off, but he has dropped back to back strikes. Weber's lead reduced to seven. We'll wrap this one up when we return. The Pepsi Championship is brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling by Denny's, home of the real breakfast made just for you. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com. And by GoRVing, visit GoRVing.com for a free DVD. What will you discover? Go RVing. Jimmy? Steve? I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money. Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast. Like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. You work construction? You hump it hard all day, every day, in the rain, in the dark, in 40 hells of heat? You making what you ought to be? Carpenter or estimator, find a job that pays what you deserve at constructionjobs.com. It's free and it works fast. You've got the skills. Now get paid for them. Constructionjobs.com. Earn what you're worth. Chris Paul comes to the line with the game in his hands. He must hit this shot for the win. I've done this hundreds of times in games like these. I can do this. My coaches taught me how. Go through your pre-shot routine. Focus on the target. Close out the crowd. Put a comfortable grip on the ball. Follow through. Let the ball roll off my fingertips. You know we got a shot clock in this sport, too. Hey, Chris, be cool. Now watch this. Who do I make it up to? Oh, no thanks. I learned my lesson. <laughs> you think you can figure this tech stuff out by yourself? No, actually, I got people now. Oh, you got people. Yes, and my people took a second look at my taxes, and they found like $1,300 that my last guy missed. $1,300? Who was your last guy? It was you. Try H&R Block's second look. We found bigger refunds for over half our clients. Those we refiled got back $1,300 more on average. Mistakes happen. Ooh, that could be the title of your next book. Good one. That's the one. That's the guy that sold me the fake breakfast. Calm down, Chief. He can't harm you no more. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Welcome back to Omaha. This earlier, the PBA and Pepsi welcoming Ken Wilsey of Concordia, Missouri. He was selected as the winner of the $25,000 Pepsi Strike Gold with the Froze Sweepstakes. If that was an X, he would have collected $25,000. Instead, he knocks down nine, gets a G for every pin. $9,000 check. There's Candace McGrath of the Pepsi Bottling Group handing over the cash to our friend Ken Wilsey. And Ken in the crowd, and what an awesome crowd it is here at Thunder Alley. Thunder Alley just opened in October. It was a dicey beginning for Billy Oatman this afternoon, but he is in a groove looking to go three in a row, looking for our first turkey of the day. Uh-oh, Pete. Three in a row. One more strike, and we're looking for our first. Ham bone. We have some intense ham bone signs in this crowd. 
this place could go nuts if Oatman collects another strike, and I would be one of them. Well, I'm, I'm confident that Billy now has a pretty good idea of what he's doing on the right lane. Let's see what happens on the left lane. Remember, only one mark, but it was a good mark. It was a strike. Hey, Randy, you know it would make that soup even tastier? Put a little ham bone in it! <laughs> I have chills this week looking at these ham bone signs. Did you see the ham bone shirts over there those kids were wearing? I did. It's scary. Absolutely frightening. How will Pete Weber respond to the ham bone? Pete, that's a double of his own. That's how a Hall of Famer responds. Now it's a three-pin match. Pete trailing by three, looking to take the lead back with a strike here in the eighth frame. Fourth strike of this match for Pete Weber. Two on the left, two on the right. Looking for his first win on television this season. And now looking for a three-bagger. Look, nice. Wow, good stuff there. You, know, you talked about the scoring pace this week. We had 12 300s. We had two 7-10 splits made this week by Rhino Page and Michael Fagan. But the scores were good, and now all of a sudden we're starting to see what we anticipated. The guy's throwing a lot of X's. Now, Billy Oatman told us five strikes in a row. There is a big sign out here and a new phrase. Let's see if we can find it. <laughs> a seven pin away from dropping the nickel. That's a, it's a nice run, but unfortunately, Billy Oatman's his string ends, and he'll be trailing by eight if he converts the seven pin. Takes care of the seven pin. And now we fire up the foundation frame, Oatman, to begin the ninth. Down eight. Billy not as animated as he normally is. He looks visibly like he is not feeling well. And maybe he's caught that flu bug. Well, he heard some sniffling going on. He saw the sweating. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on television. Oh, good shot there. And that's the foundation frame. Billy Oatman wanted to strike in the ninth frame there to set up the tenth. And this is a good shot. Now with a spare here, he can strike out and shoot 203. Pete Weber right now in the low 200s, but working on a three-bagger. Billy picks up the spare. <laughs> a strike here in the ninth and the first strike in the tenth frame, and Pete Weber will advance, and there's nothing Billy Oatman can do about it. <sighs> Pete Weber strikes in the 6th, 7th, and 8th frames. Looking for four in a row, looking for a hand bone, looking to blow the roof off of Thunder Alley. Get your sides up! I see you, Pete! I think that was for you, partner. There's my hand bone t-shirt, kids. I'm telling you, I'm going to get a real estate agent this afternoon and look to move him to Omaha. <laughs> Watch this. This is going to be 10 back. This is what we call high flush. Pure, pure shot by the Hall of Famer. And there's, <laughs> I, there's a I little react a, for Rob Stone. I just got a chop shot. Thank you, Pete. I'm blushing. This to seal the deal. Nice. Oh, had some really nice Here, shots. I thought I had a strike. That looked like done deals. Converts this nine pin, and Pete Weber will advance. But watch this. Let's see if we can get a shot of the bowling ball going through the pins. Pete Weber knows this is a great shot. Watch the bowling ball go right by the nine pin. Keep it on the lane. Pete Weber needs three pins to advance.
There's a spare pickup that we just saw. Right through the belly of it. Just keep it on the lane, stay behind the foul line. And Weber gets his first win on television of the season. Billy Oatman will roll out, and Weber will win it. 2-11 to score, and you see him. A little breath of relaxation, a little finally type. Exhale there is Oatman. Uh, too bad he couldn't find that groove in the opening frames, otherwise he might have been the one moving on. Found it late. He made the right adjustment. He left a couple of seven pins there late in the match, and that's going to cost him. Keep in mind, P. Weber shot 211, only missed the pocket once. Make adjustments faster. Here, Billy Oatman, make adjustments faster. He was telling us yesterday that he gets most of his help through instincts and through his journals. He records on a tape recorder about each block, what went well, what didn't well. And Oatman continues to enjoy making a living on the PBA Tour. He's telling us yesterday, I don't want to go back to delivering pizzas. Keep showing up on TV. You don't need to do that, Billy. So Weber will move on to take on the rookie Rhino Page. Oatman. And you know he's saying to himself, where was this in the beginning? And you know Rhino Page likes the looks of the last eight frames or so that Billy Oatman threw. Seven out of the last nine. Our CLR clean sweep. It's got a little hand bone to it. Six, seven, eight, nine, all strikes. Here's your hand bone! <laughs> <laughs> Rob Stone, here's your hand bone! Oh, man. When our coverage returns to Omaha, 24 year old Rhino Page will look to add to his record setting rookie campaign. Oh, man, this is an awesome show. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money. Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Every sip gets you closer. It's Justin Timberlake MP3s. Hey. Katie, you. HD TVs, millions of songs from Amazon MP3, and more. Sign up at PepsiStuff.com. That's the one. That's the guy that sold me the fake breakfast. Calm down, Chief. He can't harm you no more. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Weeknights. ESPN News keeps you current. Warm up with pregame analysis. Stay up to date with game time live look ins and a recap of the night's action on post game. Weeknights starting at 7 only on ESPN News. It started with over 700 clubs. It's the oldest and biggest domestic cup competition known to mankind. The 127th edition of the FA Cup. Up a shot and it's there. Chelsea guards the trophy. Man U aims to make it their 12th. But the giant killers look for their chance to shine. And come May 17th, 2008, only one will be crowned King of England. They have done it again. FA Cup fifth round. Available on Dish Network pay-per-view. So, what's going on? It's a club the whole neighborhood is talking about. It's called Club Dish. Here, use this. Sign up for Dish Network, you get hundreds of channels, sports news, movies, and free activation. Plus, there's a little something in it for me, too. When you sign up, I get $50 off my bill. Cool. See ya. Hey, where are you going? I'm getting Dish Network. This week's Go RVing on the road will... Pack the bags and head to Indianapolis 
The Denny's World Championship coming your way from Woodland Bowl live coverage 12.30 Eastern next Sunday on ESPN. After that, we head to the capital of Ohio, Columbus, for the Don Johnson Buckeye State Classic. Again, live coverage at 12.30 Eastern Sunday, March 2nd on ESPN. Take a look at our updated brackets, and so far it's held true to form. Number four seed Pete Weber taking care of Billy Oatman, 211. 203. Up next, the three seed, the rookie, the 24 year old from Topeka, Kansas, Rhino Page. And Page will bat leadoff for us. A lot of friends and family in the crowd today and all week for Page here in Omaha. Great start for the rookie. And, and what a fantastic season it's been for him. Yeah, let's just hand Rhino Page the Rookie of the Year award now because there's nobody that's going to catch this young man. This could possibly be the best rookie season in the history of our sport. The only thing missing for Rhino Page is a title. Pete Weber has 34 titles in his career. Looking for 35. And it starts off with a matching strike. Rhino Page, number two on the average list, 227.37. No rookie has ever finished that high in the 49-year history of the PBA Tour. And there's Pete Weber's numbers. Both rollers starting off with a strike here in match two. Here's Weber to start us off in the second frame. Served, Mr. Page. Tired of the nine pins already. Well, let's see what Page has here. This is fifth top ten finish. Finish number six last week. The Bear Classic making his fourth televised appearance, tying a rookie record. Set back in 1964. We had to dig for that stat. strikes in match two. Yeah, he just shredded the rack there. That's shrapnel. Really good style, form, a lot of confidence. And watch the power hit the one, two right in the face. And there's just pins flying around everywhere. A lot of maple moxie in this young man's left arm. He's kicking really bold. Make no mistake about it. is into it. All right, this is back and forth strikes. Normally when you throw them right there, all ten are going to go down, and right now Pete Weber knows he's in a street fight. Pete to match Page here in the third. in his 115th televised appearance. PDW has gone nothing but strikes here in match number two. Both bowlers sitting on a ham bone. <laughs> that may not have come out correctly. Let's just change that. Both bowlers now with the opportunity to roll for a ham bone. What's the reaction of Pete Weber after he gets this fourth strike in a row? Just how mellow and how mild he is. He doesn't explode with excitement. That's experience. That's a Hall of Famer. He knows he's in a fight right now. He doesn't want to burn himself out early. We, we may be eyeballing PBA history right now. This could be back-to-back -back ham bones.
The one thing about Rhino Cage is he's not scared. His kid's got a lot of confidence in his ability, and that's why he's done what he's done this season. We saw some struggling in match one, some washouts, some, some odd leaves. Why are we seeing nothing but strikes right here? Well, first of all, the, the southpaw Rhino Page, he's playing a completely different part of the lane than Billy Oatman tried in the first couple of shots. You saw Billy Oatman trying to play further outside. Pete Weber, in my opinion, has <laughs> just gotten comfortable. He's broken the oil pattern down a bit on the right side, and he knows exactly what his ball is going to do when it leaves his hand. So the comfort level for both players much, much higher in this match. Rhino Page even picked up a 7-10 split this week at the position round of 32, one of two rollers to accomplish that this week here in Omaha. We saw 12 300 games as well. Too. That was a bad shot. Rhino knows it. Pete knows it. Yeah, the heck of a miss. But Rhino gets the huge break and continues to keep the string alive. We are getting spoiled here in match number two. Looking for five in a row. What do you call that, partner? T-bone? <laughs> All right, now this is what revolutions and power will do for you. Watch this ball go light. This is why you put rotation and revolutions on a bowling ball, so you carry hits like that. This is the Motel 6 sixth frame. If Weber can get a strike here in the sixth, he'll earn $600 from Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. Will also be eligible for a $6,000 bonus if he throws the front six more than any other bowler on TV this season. After Weber's done, Rhino Page is going to have a chance to convert the Motel 6 front six. Let me just give you a couple of Ebonite Digitrax numbers. Ball speed, Pete Weber 17 miles an hour, Rhino Page 20 miles an hour. Rhino much firmer, so he's going to be going straighter. Pete Weber's opening up the lane a bit more with the softer speed. He's a bad mammal! Bad mammal! Six-pack for Weber. Folks, you may be witnessing history here. Fire up your DVR. Call the neighbors over. We've already had two handboats in this match. The conclusion of Paige Weber from Omaha when we return. Everybody knows that nothing puts a damper on the right moment like an interruption. The good news is it could wait till later. Because for guys like me with ED, there's Cialis. Cialis is the only erectile dysfunction tablet clinically proven to both go to work fast in as little as 30 minutes for some men and work up to 36 hours. No other ED tablet can do both. Work fast or give us the option of having up to 36 hours to get back to what got interrupted. And Cialis works so that I can respond to Sally only when we're ready. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Why ask your doctor about Cialis? Because when the moment is right, you can be ready. Another good thing about GEICO is they've got, like, real live people working there 24-7. So, like, say you need to report a claim, right? A real person will be there to help you. Then you can use GEICO.com to view photos of the damage, track your claim, print an estimate. You want an English muffin? They literally hand you a toasted muffin with butter and jam. <sighs> oh, it's tasty. That's a, that's a complete dramatisation, of course, but you get my point. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. 
We didn't have a fancy showroom or an expensive location. Our goal was simply to provide great hardwood flooring at the best possible prices anywhere. Today, as the largest direct retailer of hardwood flooring, we're still not fancy and a bit out of the way, but we continue to have the best hardwood flooring at incredible prices. Two and a quarter inch solid oak utility grade flooring, only 99 cents a square foot. Supreme pre-finished horizontal natural bamboo, just $1.99 a square foot. Visit your local lumber liquidators or lumberliquidators.com. The day that I had a heart attack, I was on the seventh hole, the furthest point from the clubhouse, and I was laboring, carrying the golf clubs, but a golfer does not leave his golf clubs. <laughs> I take aspirin now because I enjoy living, and there's a lot more living that I want to do. Talk to your doctor about aspirin in your heart. Aspirin's not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. I shanked it. <laughs> my oldest daughter just got married, and I want to live to see my grandchildren. Welcome back to the 2008 Pepsi Championship. It's the first PBA stop in Omaha since 1967, and we have a classic going for you right now. Time now for the Motel 6 voting result from last week. We asked you which bowler would you like to see competing in the 2008 Motel 6 Roll the Riches, and Chris Barnes dominating the Pod 3 results. So he'll advance the final vote on February 24th. Rhino Page, right now, his effort in the sixth frame, it has been nothing but strikes here in match number two for both Pete Weber and Rhino Page. And the luck runs out. But a great run from the Rook. This ball here is going to go high. Rhino Page knows that as soon as it left its, his hand, maybe an adjustment in his future. Page missing the opportunity to convert on the Motel 6 sixth frame. It takes care of the spare. Remember, his last shot on the left lane went Brooklyn. That shot goes high, and right now Rhino Page is thinking, okay. Was it just bad shots? Poor execution? Or is it time to make an adjustment with my feet and my target? Omaha, about three hours from his home in Topeka. Actually, right now he's living with the Baumgartner family. And their two kids, Trevor and Trent, have been staying with Rhino since Tuesday in his hotel room. I'll tell you more about that in a second. And then this is the head pin here. All right. All right, and that's what we saw Billy Oman do in match number one. He gets it too far to, to the left, left of target, and that's no man's land. The ball's not going to hook back from that spot. The ball hurts my eyes to look at. Does that have a battery pack attached to it? That thing is bright. Man. So... Pretty much all week, Rhino Page has been shacking up with 13-year-old Trevor and 10-year-old Trent Baumgarten. We asked him what it's like living with a couple of these kids in your hotel room. Uh, I learned they're expensive, and it's tough to keep them entertained. They are here today because they love bowling, and they are seeing a wonderful effort here in match number two from Rhino Page. And now Pete Weber looking to go seven straight strikes. Audacious 10 pin. It even got a little late nudge there. Yeah, good shot. A little weak 10. With a conversion. Pete Weber will maintain a 13 pin lead. Not the best of shots. Watch how soft it turns over down the lane. Pete Weber wants a little bit more reaction down lane to kick that 10 out. A TV break. Put an end to both of these guys. Strike streak. Yeah, with, a, with 116 telecasts under your belt, you're used to the commercial breaks and <coughs> Pete Weber is a veteran he's used to that kind of stuff and right now looking to get back on the gravy train with biscuit wheels we asked him what his goals were at this stage of the season he said just win I, I just got to get that one title this season oh huge break there chipping that nine late 
suddenly both bowlers scratching their heads. Well, this is what happens a lot of times when you leave a week 10, you decide to give it a little extra at the bottom, at the release point, and that ball just starts to dive real sharp into the 1-3 pocket. He almost leaves a 4-7-9. Just a 4-7. Nicely converted and still maintains an 11 pin lead. And that's number one. Weber rolled seven strikes. Hey. And Roots beating Billy Oatman 211 to 203. Up now the rookie and the number three seed, Rhino Page. And after throwing five solid shots, or excuse me, four solid strikes, he goes Brooklyn through the nose and then flags the head pin. And he's making an adjustment to his ball as well. Little tape. Want to make sure that grip is nice and snug. You don't want to get in there and squeeze up, squeeze on it. You want your hand nice and relaxed in the bowling ball. The winner of this match to take on the living legend, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Page in the eighth, off of back-to-back -back spares. Back on the strike train. Again, staying away from the outside part of the lane, Rhino Page a little bit straighter down and in from about the second arrow. He knows that if he gets it too far to the left, it's not going to hook back, so he's going to try to play a little bit more towards the middle part of the lane. Ball speed, I think, is also another issue. A little too fast going away with it. The ball's not going to read the pattern. Tight all week. A little issue on that left lane. If he gets it going too straight up the lane, it goes Brooklyn. A little too far to the left, it goes light. Again, I think it's a speed issue. And with a spare here, he'll still be in the 230s. Unfortunately for him, his opponent, Pete Weber, is in the 240s. Weber could max at 267. Best page could be now 246. And all Pete Weber has to do is go strike in the ninth, spare first ball in the tenth, strike on his fill shot, and he'll shut out Rhino Page. That's all he has to do? Yeah. He doesn't have to double or strike out. Yeah, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's easy. It's not. If it was easy, anybody could do it. the biggie right there because now with a strike in the 10th frame it's over. He opened up this match with six consecutive strikes then went spare spare and now finding strike again in the foundation frame. Now Pete Weber has a decision to make. Does he try to convert to this. the 3-4-7, or does he just go for count, meaning the 4-7? If he goes for count, I even moved. he'll shoot 235. Rhino Page would need all three in the 10th to win by one. What would you do? I'd go for count. Pete's going for it. Oh. All three. I admire his bravery and guts, but the execution was lacking there. He'll end up 231. And I'm sorry, I misspoke there. Rhino Page would have had to go strike spare. I, I don't know how that Pete ball Weber did high. the right thing, I, I believe, in trying to go for it to convert it and go for the win. Rhino Page now needs any kind of mark and good count to 10th frame. And he's going to advance to take on Walter Ray. Unbelievable. TV troubles may be continuing for Weber. Three seed, Rhino Page, needs a mark and count to move on. Look good from the get-go. 
And a key thing right now for Ryan, and it's something you and I have been talking about for weeks, is keep that emotion in check. Well, he got the mark he was looking for. That's all he needed. Now this ball, he's going to take a spare ball and throw it straight down the middle. He just needs count. This match is over. He's going to take Walter Ray on in the next match. Slams eight down. Rhino Page, a big win over the Hall of Famer. What an incredible turn of events. When, when it looked like Pete Weber couldn't miss the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Goes right through the nose in the tenth frame. He had he had the match all but sewn up. He needed a mark. Ronald Page wins and moves on. Oh, 236, 231, a wonderful match which began with both competitors going frames one through five with nothing but strikes. So Page moves on. One Hall of Famer down. Cue the second Hall of Famer. Age. It's only a number to Walter Ray Williams, Jr., the 48-year-old living legend, Hunt's title number 45 when we return to Omaha. Hey, college hoops fans. Verizon Wireless is the only place to experience ESPN MVP. Sign up for VCast, free for one month, and stay in the game with GameCast, video alerts, ESPN bracketology, and more. Go to verizonwireless.com slash ESPN to learn how. Only Aaron's delivers the most for the least. Aaron's delivers quality with top name brand furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Aaron's delivers trust by never checking your credit because everybody's pre-approved. Aaron's delivers value. Our sale price and our 12, 18, or 24-month lease prices are the lowest anywhere, guaranteed. And Aaron's delivers all this the same day. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. Okay, let's go. your child brings back from an RV trip is more than you can possibly imagine. What will you discover? Go RVing. Visit GoRVing.com for a free video and see an RV dealer. <laughs> Seriously, what's up with the money suit? Oh, this? That's my tax refund. It's actually uh, quite convenient. Thanks. Isn't that dangerous? You got a better way? Yeah. What? I got people. People? Yeah. My people do their thing. They get me my refund and load it on a prepaid card. So the money goes on a card instead of being made into a suit. Huh. Only from H&R Block. Get your taxes done and have your refund loaded onto our H&R Block Emerald prepaid MasterCard. You can see if I got anything left back there, like a couple bucks or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Every sip gets you closer. It's Justin Timberlake MP3s. Hey. Katie Wee. HDTVs, millions of songs from Amazon MP3 and more. Sign up at PepsiStuff.com. The Pepsi Championship is brought to you by Atonic, the official footwear of the PBA. Atonic, first one there. By Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA. By H&R Block, when you got H&R Block, you got people. And by the United States Bowling Congress, ensuring the integrity and protecting the future of the sport of bowling, bowl with us. Welcome back to Sold Out Thunder Alley, standing room only or sitting room only, if you're one of the lucky few to have been upgraded to the Aaron's Dream Seats. There's a look at our winners this week as we take a look at the updated step ladder. And again, this tournament, final five at least, is held true to form. Pete Weber, the four seed, moved on, but he was knocked off by the three seed, Rhino Page, 236 to 231. Up next, Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Mike Scroggins waiting in the wings. He'll take on the winner of this match. Rhino Page owned Walter Ray Williams Jr. in this event throughout match play. In their first game of match play, Rhino Page beat him 299 to 255. And then the 17th game of match play, they faced one another again. Rhino Page beat him again 278 
to 239. And all of this, a nice primer for the third major of the season. Next week, we're in Indianapolis, where for the eighth time, Woodland Bowl will host a major. It's the Denny's World Championship live coverage next Sunday, 1230 Eastern on ESPN. And Walter Ray Williams Jr. for a majority of the season has held on to the number one spot in the Player of the Year rankings list. If he wins this match, he will reclaim the number one spot from Chris Barnes. And we asked him about, you know, when, when the season started, was Player of the Year even on your mind? He said, at 48, it, it's not a true consideration. Then I started doing well. And I said, all right, admit, maybe I got a shot at this thing. And then he started saying, all right, I'm going to need another win the way Barnes is rolling. Now he's saying, I'm going to need a couple wins and maybe a major the way Barnes is rolling. Rhino Page, the way he's rolling. Everybody, watch out. This rookie is going to make some serious news in the future. But in order to do that, he better figure out this left lane. He did get a couple more practice shots after his last match against Weber. But this is the lane he struggled on. And I think it's interesting that Walter Ray decided to let Rhino I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money? Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast. Like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Man, don't you just hate when you can't remember which bowling ball is yours? Now, nah, here's my baby. Old Reliable. Book online at motel6.com and we'll leave the light on for you. That's the one. That's the guy that sold me the fake breakfast. Come down, Chief. He can't harm you no more. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Man, don't you just hate when you can't remember which bowling ball is yours? Nah, here's my baby. Old Reliable. Book online at motel6.com, and we'll leave the light on for you. Bassmaster Classic, February 23rd and 24th on ESPN2. 60-inch screen, high definition. Football season is coming up. You can watch it right here. What do you think? I'll huh? take it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't need it. I remember how much you said you liked mine. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money. Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. You work construction, you hump it hard all day, every day, in the rain, in the dark, in 40 hells of heat. You making what you ought to be? Carpenter or estimator, find a job that pays what you deserve at constructionjobs.com. It's free, and it works fast. You've got the skills. Now get paid for them. Constructionjobs.com. Earn what you're worth.
And welcome back to Ohio, oh, Omaha. We apologize for our technical difficulties. Some nasty weather has hit this area of the country. Here's Walter Ray Williams, strike, strike, spare. Here he is in the fourth. Remember the, the shot or the line that Pete Weber was using? He was a little bit more towards the center part of the lane and kind of throwing it right to that spot right there where Walter Ray is playing. The way I see it, if Walter Ray misses a little left of target, he's going to throw it right into the dry boards that Pete Weber was using. I think Walter Ray needs to move in more towards the center part of the lane and hook it just a little bit more. Walter Ray remains perfect with single spare conversions this week as he takes a seat. His lead at nine over Rhino Page. Page bowled collegiately at the University of Kansas where he was a member of the 2004 Intercollegiate Bowling Championship winning team. First team All-American in 04, 05. So now a double for Page. After starting with two spares, he now goes back-to-back -back strikes. Rano Page is really taking advantage of his opportunities this week. He barely made it in the match play, qualified 32nd. But in match play, did some serious damage. And one of those guys that he beat both times, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Kept saying to us yesterday, what a week it's been, you know. The scores are really high. He's saying to myself, man, I need 1,000 for the next four games. He hit it on the dot. Sneaking his way into the round of 64. A wild week. He didn't even think he was going to make it in the top 64. And here he is, one win away from bowling for the title here in Omaha. Well, the, the scoring pace has slowed down a bit, primarily because of the lanes going through transition. Walter Ray needs to fine tune where he's playing. Rhino Page trying to get redialed in, so to speak. He's close, but not close enough to knock all 10 down. Takes care of the spare. Walter Ray pops back up. And interesting about Walter Ray, he has made the finals all three times the Scorpion oil pattern has been used this season. Scorpion, 41 feet, a little bit more oil placed further down the lane. Hello, pocket. And when you see Walter Ray take that little sidestep when the ball's about five feet from the pocket, he knows it's pretty good. See, that time the six pin goes to the sidewall, cuts the ten and half. That's the type of stuff he's looking for. They are even after five frames. 163 shows. That's a lot. 143 victories on television. That, too, is a lot. Yes. When he gets on his pony, he starts getting it up. He likes it. Those two are picture perfect. Walter Ray looking to advance to his 86th title match of his illustrious career. We'll find out if he can do it. When we return to Omaha, he has a 10-pin lead right now over Rhino Page. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money? Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast. Like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24 7. <laughs> 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 Every sip gets you closer. It's Justin Timberlake MP3s. Hey. I like it. Hey to you. HD TVs, millions of songs from Amazon MP3 and more. Sign up at PepsiStuff.com. Only Aaron's delivers the most for the least. Aaron's delivers quality. With top name brand furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers, Aaron's delivers trust by never checking your credit because everybody's pre-approved. Aaron's delivers value. Our sale price and our 12, 18, or 24-month lease prices are the lowest anywhere, guaranteed. And Aaron's delivers all this the same day. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. Okay, let's go. I was in the grocery store when I had a heart attack. My daughter was with me. 
I said to myself, I can't let this happen. Not two days before Christmas. So I took a bare aspirin out of my purse and chewed it. My doctor said the bare aspirin saved my life. Please talk to your doctor about aspirin and your heart. I'm going to be grandma for a long time. She's the best grandmother. Grandkids are fun because I can send them home. <laughs> That's the one. That's the guy that sold me the fake breakfast. Calm down, chief. He can't harm you no more. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. Six-time PBA Player of the Year, Walter Ray Williams Jr. with a 10-pin lead. PBA.com is your best source for all the latest PBA news, including information about PBA Experience Bowling Leagues. And these leagues, which are a joint venture between the PBA and the USBC, give league bowlers a chance to bowl on the same oil patterns that the pros compete on each week. The leagues are constantly forming, so head on over to PBA.com today and click on the PBA Experience link to find a league in your area. I think that's one of the best things that ever happened to our sport. Those PBA Experience Leagues, you get to really find out what our players are bowling on on a weekly basis. Page working on a spare in the sixth. Wow. Heavy on that one. Not a great looking ball reaction for Rhino Page. And quite honestly, I think he's in a world of trouble because Walter Ray is not going to miss the pocket. And Rhino Page is already trailing in the match. So another spare for Page to go with his two strikes. Rob, let me just give you some Evan I Digitrack numbers. Rhino Page in game two was throwing it about 20 miles an hour. He's actually slowed down to about 18 miles an hour. You see what our guys average this week? Or excuse me, the average leaders for this season. You touched on the fact that Rhino Page, number two in average. Pretty incredible, again, for a guy that has to come out of the TQR. Both players having a clean game so far, but it's an 11-pin lead for Williams. made that easier. And again, here's what's interesting. The Digitrex numbers are saying that he's actually slowing down and the last two shots have gone high. And I'm thinking he needs to go the other way. Firm the ball, speed up, keep the ball on line. He doesn't have much time to right that wrong. Walter Ray is waiting in the wings having bold consecutive strikes. Oh. Ryan whips that one. And there's his first open frame. And a big mistake late in the match. But for our fans that are new to the Ebonite Digitrack system, it's a digital tracking system that gives us accurate data of ball motion on the lane. Thank you, Kenny Samard and Dino Castillo. You stay classy, guys. Thank you, Ron Burgundy. Look out, man. Mm -mm. Oh, that was horrible. Come on, what are you doing, man? Just a bit outside with this shot, Rob. Nice. You know, a lesser bowler would have left the 2 8 10 with this shot here. Walter Ray, the legend, only leaves the 8 pick. And a wobbly 8 at that. <laughs> Great react. You know, one thing that Walter Ray is. Using right now that he rarely sees, he's got a little wrist band going on his uh, on his uh, right wrist there. And normally the players use that when they start getting sore wrists. A lot of times that will add some extra extra pressure to the ligaments in the wrist area there. A lot of times it's just for heat. A lot of times it just makes the wrist feel better. And I'm not a doctor, but you are. Maybe you can explain why. Better. Come on. Liked it. Come on. Messenger. Get down! That is so gnarly! Just when it looked like a week 10, he gets the soft messenger to roll the 10 late. Watch this. Head pin coming off the sidewall. Come on, baby. 
Candy Graham for 10 pin. Candy Graham for 10 pin. Oh my God. Now will Rhino Page respond? An open frame in the seventh. He sits at 134. Not bad, Rook. Not bad. Ball change. Rhino Page says, all right, now's the time. Third strike of this match for Page. We begin the foundation frame, the ninth. You see Page can max at 224. is starting to heat up like a piece of beef at a Mongolian barbecue. You've been waiting since dinner last night to drop that one. Check out this. Walter Ray rolls the late 10. Ronald Page says, you know what? I can do a little bit of the same, buddy. Hot yeah. bottle from Walter Ray. Come on. How about a little Tomahawk 10? Puts Walter Ray in the 220s, the high 220s. The best Rhino Page can shoot is 224. Remember, Pete Weber in the last match had Rhino Page in this exact same situation. Open the 10th frame, open the door for Rhino Page. But this is the great Walter Ray. In the 10th, looking for a three-bagger. And finding it. And that's all she wrote. Walter Ray will be in the 230s. Walter Ray will move on. Watch the 10 pin go out late again. This match came down to Walter Ray getting out that 10 pin. Now time for a little hand bone momentum. Okay. You gave him the kiss of death, partner. Don't throw anything, all right? You hear the applause from the crowd. That's a disgusted applause. <laughs> uh. Walter Ray Williams Jr. in his first televised appearance since December 9th of last year will move on to the title match. He will take on Mike Scroggins. 236 goes Walter Ray. And he'll retake the lead for the player of the year race over Chris Barnes. And what a gutsy, outstanding performance oh, too late, Hoss. by too Rhino late. Page. And you're right, that adjustment came too late. Rhino Page can take a little hand bone momentum here to Indianapolis mm -hmm. as he gets set. For a master, you for should, a major, I know. You just won't leave it alone. Because the crowd wants to see it. Give me a hand bone. There you go. It's easy now. <laughs> Is that a real <laughs> hand bone? Is that actual? I think that's a real hand bone. Bone marrow I, on I that saw, sign? I saw flies on it earlier. Looked like some meat on that bone. I might have gone, gone over there for a little lunch break. Young man's got a bright future. Well, that future maybe now. He drops a nickel. Not enough to take down a Hall of Famer. 236-224. Walter A. Williams Jr. moves on to the final set. Number one seed, Mike Scroggins, waiting in the wings. Take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. We close in on our title match next. Going over and over? It's not just you. Stopping and starting? Going urgently? You're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? 
Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. Bassmaster Classic, February 23rd and 24th on ESPN2. Wake up your whiskers with Electric Shave. Electric Shave! Stands up whiskers for an up to 52% closer shave. Man, that was close. Electric Shave. Blade close. Electric smooth. Travel, stress, eating on the run. Diarrhea stops me in my tracks. Stop it fast with KO Pectate. Unlike pills, KO speeds to the source, shutting down diarrhea and its discomfort fast. Really fast. Stop diarrhea fast with KO Pectate. With most car insurance companies, when you have an accident, you have to run around town to get estimates, track down a rental car, and then you have to keep calling to see if your car is ready. With Progressive, just go to their concierge center, give them a call, drop off your car, and they give you a rental. Progressive even guarantees the work. Taking care of everything for you, and that's Progressive. Call or click today. Sold out crowd here in Omaha, and we'd like to thank Ted Bear, the owner of Thunder Alley, for making that happen. And all he's done this week, a wonderful stop, and we look forward to hopefully coming back here to Thunder Alley. Next week, though, we will be in Indianapolis for the third major of the season. Woodland Bowl, our host, it's the Denny's World Championship. Live coverage next Sunday. 12.30 Eastern for the Motel 6 text to vote question this week. The PBA has placed the top 16 in points after the Dick Weber Open in the four voting pods. This week's question, which board do you want to see competing in the Roll of Riches? Text Roll A to 30997 for West Malott. Roll B to 30997 for Parker Bone the third. Roll C to 30997 for Mike Devaney. Or Roll D to 30997 for Tommy Jones. The winner of each pod will advance to a final vote on February 24th. You can text in up to 10 times per day until Friday at 3, and you'll be charged 99 cents per text vote plus standard text messaging rates. After struggling on the tube, Mike Scroggins is suddenly must-see TV. Scroggy looks to push his TV win streak to five straight. Yeah! Next. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money. Well, that's not a real breakfast. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. You work construction, you hump it hard all day, every day, in the rain, in the dark, in 40 hells of heat. You making what you ought to be? Carpenter or estimator, find a job that pays what you deserve at constructionjobs.com. It's free, and it works. Fast. You've got the skills. Now get paid for them. Constructionjobs.com. Earn what you're worth. I mean, sure. I help people save money on car insurance, but few folks know that I support wildlife conservation too. You gonna eat all those? Well, you are, aren't you? You're just gonna go to town. All right, well, I'll make this quick. I'm teaming up with the association of zoos and aquariums. I'm gonna be making the rounds to get the word out. Are those clams? I love clams. Do you uh, want to offer me any? Ah, uh, apparently not. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> Seriously, what's up with the money suit? Oh, this? That's my tax refund. It's actually uh, quite convenient. Thanks. Isn't that dangerous? You got a better way? Yeah. What? I got people. People? Yeah. My people do their thing. They get me my refund and load it on a prepaid card. 
so the money goes on a card instead of being made into a suit. Huh. Only from H&R Block. Get your taxes done and have your refund loaded onto our H&R Block Emerald prepaid MasterCard. You can see if I got anything left back there, like a couple bucks or nothing. That's the one. That's the guy that sold me the fake breakfast. Calm down, Chief. He can't harm you no more. Come to Denny's for a real breakfast, like the Complete Breakfast Trio, starting at $5.99. Real breakfast, 24-7. The Pepsi Championship is brought to you by Aaron's. Nobody beats Aaron's. Nobody. By CLR, all kinds of dirty, one kind of clean. By GoRV. Visit GoRVing.com for a free DVD. What will you discover? GoRV. And by Denny's, home of the real breakfast made just for you. Buffalo, New York, Medford, Oregon, and now Omaha, Nebraska. Selling out their venues for PBA Bowling this season. We are live from Thunder Alley in Omaha for the 2008 Pepsi Championship. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson with you as we get set for our title match. And everything has gone to form. It'll be the two seed, Walter Ray Williams Jr. taking on the number one seed, Mike Scroggins. Randy, how'd we get here? You want me to tell you, Rob? I do. Okay, here you go. Match number one, Pete Weber defeated Billy Oatman by the score of 211 to 203. Pete's late four-bagger put the match away. Match number two, Pete took on Rhino Page. Rhino Page beat the Hall of Famer, 236 to 231. Weber's open in the 10th, sealed his fate. Match number three, the great one, Walter Ray Williams Jr. took on Rhino Page, and he beat Rhino by the score of 236 to 224. Walter Ray Williams Jr. struck in the seventh, eighth, and ninth to shut out Rhino. And that's your Geico Championship recap. And Walter Ray will bat leadoff here in the title match. His 86th title match of his career. All right, good shot, good shot. Will the party at Scroggies continue? Or will Walter Ray win his 45th career title? Oh, my. Well, get that on TiVo and replay it because... I can't remember the last time I saw Walter Ray miss a single pin spare on television. Well, not to work. You have got to be kidding me. A layer of paint between those two. So here's Mike Scroggins, your number one seed, giving an early opening. The lefty. Hey, Randy. Bring the cooler over. There's a 10-pin party in the pit. <laughs> you are so waiting to say that. Yeah. All day. We are going to be with you till the conclusion of this match. Scroggins with an early lead as Walter Ray Williams Jr. missed the 10-pin conversion. Here's Scroggins looking for a double to open things up. And finding the... And Mike Scroggins early on using the same bowling ball with two different surfaces. I think it's real interesting to note that, you know, he made a big comment about how much his equipment has helped him this season. And we'll get back to that in a moment. The Hall of Famer left the 10 in frame number one, leaves the 7 in frame number two. And what's going on? He misses the 10 pin, and then this is just a bad shot. Takes care of that single pin pickup. Yeah, there's no way he's missing back to back single pins, is there? I wouldn't have In thought this he would have missed one. Take a look at the matchup, and the big number right here, Randy. Mike Scroggins with the win becomes the 38th millionaire in PBA history. 
That is more like it. By the way, the next time you draw my telestrator, ask permission first. Yes, sir. All right, this is what he does best. Great shot here. He says, all right, I don't know what I was thinking the first two shots, but I'm back on it. We asked Scroggins yesterday his thoughts about becoming or hitting that million mark and his response, no way. Didn't know that was something that was, could happen. I never thought I could do that in bowling. Oh, what a start. What a start from Mike Scroggins. Getting back to the equipment issue with Mike Scroggins, he says, the boy, the balls have really helped me out. The equipment I'm using, in fact, he's using the same ball he used back when he ran the field at the Dick Weber Open. But the interesting note is he actually went to college with the man that invented the bowling ball he's using, Hank Boomershine. Scroggins up 31. Strikes in the first, second, and third. Four strikes in a row. You know what it is. Get your signs ready, Omaha. Another pen is thrown as my partner Rob is visibly shaken by the fact that that possible handbone went right out the window with this shot right here that Mike Scroggins leaves a three pin on. That's okay, partner. You'll have another shot at it. Trust me. We asked Scroggins yesterday at his goals for the season. He said, uh, just to get exempt for next year, he's been having some ankle problems with that left ankle. Didn't expect a whole lot this season. And I said, now, you know, now what do you expect? You're having such a wonderful season. He said, I'd like to do well in the two majors, you know, maybe finish in the top 29 at the U.S. Open. We've got to increase those expectations. And he goes back to leaving the 10. Yeah, and, they, and that's the, the, the wrong kind of 10th in the week 10 where the six pin just kind of a falls DOA right there in the right channel. Walter Ray, 10 pin in the first frame, seven pin in the second, strike in the third, another 10 pin in the fourth. And you know, I think Walter Ray going into this title match should have been very confident. The left side doesn't look all that strong. Okay. It's got some traffic already from Billy Oatman and Rhino Page. Mike yeah. Scroggins likes to go down and in and straight. You wouldn't think that that would favor that type of style after all of the traffic on that side. Very odd start to this title match. And there's a bad shot and a trip for it. Gets away with it. And I mean, it just looks like a total loss of concentration for Walter Ray. I mean, he misses a single pin spare, throws a bad shot in the second. Wow. There he, he carries, the, a straight. carries the four pin. He just said, I threw it that bad and I get a strike. Very strange. Scroggins is going strike, 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 spare. Here he is in the fifth. Gets back on the strike train. And after one of the worst losing stretches for Mike for uh, Mike Scroggins, boy, he's really turned it around at the Dick Weber. That's where it started. In our Flowmax weekly update, you can see where Mike Scroggins was last week. What did he turn it around in a hurry? Well, Scroggins broke an eight-game losing streak at that Motel 6 Dick Weber Open. He won four matches as the number five seed to win his fourth career title. Leaves the seven. But Scroggins firmly in control of this match from the outset. And keeping it in play, and there, this is a good shot right here. Ringing seven. Otherwise, he would have had a double, and he would have been in the 220s. Right now, firm control, and covers the single pin spare. He's got it going on. And remember, single pin spares were a bit of a bugaboo for him earlier this season. His last win prior to the Dick Weber Open was in 2005 at the Masters. He went on some kind of losing streak. This time, baby, come on! It's back! Come on! Ruh-roh, Raggy! Ruh-roh! 
At the end of this week's four qualifying rounds, he was never lower than second place. Yeah, pretty strong week for this guy. He was either in first or in second the entire week. Had a losing record in match play and still qualified number two for the show. Looking for a turkey here. Three in a row. Looking to cut the lead to ten. That's better. Worst break in bowling right here, solid eight. I've got a lot of experience with leaving these on television. Watch wow. this. Mm. That's like getting kicked right in the gut. A shot that seems absolutely perfect. Abnormal pin carry as the pins go through the back of the pit. The bowling ball goes right by the eight pin. And in my opinion, again, the worst break in bowling next to a pocket 7-10. This will be Scroggins' sixth top 10 finish of the season. You see his last 12 TV matches, 0 for 8, and then 4-0. and 0. Looking to go 5-0 and 0 with the win here. Speaking of rut row. pretty good shot. Interesting. He thinks it's a pretty good shot, and he goes right through the nose. Leaving the 4 6 10 and letting Walter Ray right back into this match. Well, his shot for a clean game just about over right now. Doesn't really even attempt to take care of the spare and goes for points instead. Got to shake that shot off, come back with your Sunday best right here and get right back into this. Keep the pressure and the lead on Walter Ray Williams Jr. Like that. Nicely done. Way to come back after that shot. In the seventh frame, this is high flush. Perfect. the win, Scroggins would move from 6th to 4th in the Player of the Year points race. Williams is going to be number one at the end of the day. But he is not, I mean, those 7s and the 10s. Just annoying Nats today. And the solid 8. It's, it's yeah. apparent that these pins here at That's Thunder so Alley have no idea who's throwing the bowling ball at them because this carry is pretty bad. Carey has been very strong. Oh, absolutely. Carey's been good all week. The scores and the average 12 300 games. You don't have 12 300 games for the week if you have bad pin carry. Right now, Walter Ray Williams Jr. is having bad pin carry. You look at the solid eight in the seventh frame. He carries that hit. This match, he's, he's actually got the lead in this match. Carries that lower seven, which he normally does. Got a big lead. And that looked like a bad shot off his hand. Looked like he missed it just a little bit. If you look at his follow through, his follow through just didn't look right. Watch his follow through and what his arm does as he lets go of this bowling ball. Pretty impressive. I think it was more taps than I had in the first round. To me, that looked a little strange. And again, another week 10. And right now, the best Walter Ray can do if he strikes out in the 10th frame is 206. You have to wonder if there is more to that right wristband that meets the eye. Again, we're not used to seeing Walter Ray wear that, and that's not a sweatband. That is, that is an actual kind of form of a, of a brace. There's Velcro and a wrap around, and that is not something he normally wears, but we haven't heard him or seen him use that as an excuse today. And he didn't comment on it during our meetings with him. He didn't say or mention anything about it. Right now, Mike Scroggins can step up and win this tournament ninth and 10th frame. Double for Scroggy. What a shot. That puts him in the two teams, and right now, he just needs a mark. As he takes a re-rack, he's going to gather his thoughts. He wants to make the best shot possible. He needs any mark in the 10th frame, and he's going to win for the second time this season. One title and eight TV shows in Scroggins' first 13 seasons. 
three titles and 20 televised appearances over the last five seasons. A late bloomer as Mike Scroggins needs a mark to shut out and a mark to go over $1 million in career earnings. Million dollar shot right here. Just to spare. All he needs is a spare. If he misses this, Walter Ray can step up in the 10th frame and win. He must convert this 7-pin. Or, excuse me, the 10-pin. Takes care of the 10. And he does not mathematically have the title. He puts himself in a very good spot. Three pins to win. I think Mike Scroggins can handle that. Way to take advantage of the bad carry by Walter A. Williams Jr. Mike Scroggins with the only hiccup in the seventh frame. Needs three. Mike Scroggins, career title, number five and second of the season. Has never won multiple titles in a season until now. Remember, he won the Motel 6 Dick Weber Open, coming all the way from that five-seed slot. This week, a little bit easier. One game, one win, one more title. His first career title came back in 1992 in Sac Sacramento, California. There you go, Randy. What are you going to do? Walter oh. Ray with the shot. What's shout he doing? <laughs> Two-handed. I love it. Oh, we were practicing it. the other day. Get it. Ah, come on. You need some more practice for that. Thanks for the shout out, though, Walter Ray. Ah, but Ray's the hardware, Mike Scroggins. This win moves him up two spots to number four in the Player of the Year points race. And he is now the 38th millionaire in the history of the PBA. 214 to 191, and the title goes to Mike Scroggins. We take a look at our CLR clean sweep from the title match. Mike Scroggins doing everything right except for that seventh frame, but beautiful strikes, kicking that seven pin out. Seven strikes in the title match for Scroggins. And how does this start shaping things up for next week in Indy with our third major of the season? Well, I, I think the player of the year race is still wide open, although Walter Ray and Chris Barnes are, are at the top. But you got to look at guys like Mike Scroggins, too. He's got a lot of confidence going into next week. And live coverage of the Denny's World Championship from Indianapolis coming your way here on ESPN next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern. Omaha, we thank you for a wonderful outing. Sold-out crowd here at Thunder Alley. Mike Scroggins taking tour title number five. For Randy Peterson and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Up next, the World Cup of Crip Shots.